This is Boston University Basketball on ESPN Plus. Today, from the roof at the Case Center in Boston, it's the Terriers hosting the Marist College Red Foxes. Five to shoot for BU. Morales finding it tough sledding, but oh. he finally figures out a way on the baseline. Oh, uh, just two in games decided by five points or less, so that's execution down the stretch. Good block by Sue. Jow and Tuka got stuffed. Ne Noah Harris, true freshman out of New Jersey, Rutgers prep. He'll take the three and hit it, and that's his game. That's his. The inbounds to the left wing three, and Javon Cooley gets his first points of the day. Now, certain guys, you wonder if that's going to change where they're going to go over. Morales out to Kalen. Again, a physical body. That's a tough matchup for Garrett. CJ, same spot. How about that? Javon Cooley. Yeah, we'll have to wait till 2022. Fletcher Tynan sneaks in for two. You know, Anthony, he matched his career high with nine boards against Dartmouth last weekend. Javante trying to get it on his own this time, and he does. How did he get that shot away? Oh. This is as close as they've been since the beginning of the game, and now a steal. Jonas Harper, and he gets fouled on a tough collision under the basket. Jonas bounces right back up, and he to shoot. Let's see what Javante does this time. From the foul line, smooth as you please. How many times have you seen that in his career? Two. Jordan Jones making the move on Suk Matone and he lost the ball. Oh, Terrier's getting some steals back, Tynan this time. Oh, that's a great fake by Javante McCoy. That was At layups. Tynan wide open from that hot spot in the corner, but this time Tate cleans it up for two. Oh, Dave. They've gone 10 minutes now with no turnovers. And Javante McCoy misses, but how about the tip, the fingertip tip in by Fletcher Tynan. Well, and Tate gets swallowed up at the line. Again, late clock, shot clock situation for BU, but Javante converts. Remember when you said Javante a little bit. Atuka. Great pass. Dishes off this time, and the dunk by Braden Bell. Well, Atuka, two possessions. Jonas wanted one of those threes to go down. There's Atuka. Oh, the spin move and the hang and score for Atuka. What a move. Two games leading the Terriers in scoring both times, but there's a three from Miles Brewster. His first points of the day. It's two. Wright drills the three. Ricardo Wright answering back for Maris. Harper again. The bottom this time for Jonas Harper. Yeah, and I think the all-time Patriot League rebounding list coming into today. Uh, those two have been together for half a decade. So they're going to be in a race. Takes some misses inside. Great execution. Just couldn't finish. Javante for the triple. And he finds the bottom. And Javante is in double figures now. He's got 12. 64% uh, and they were way under that on Sunday against Navy, or the game could have been even closer. Jonas Harper finds the range again from three. What a battle, and Wright takes it himself and scores with the left hand, and he'll get a chance. Advised three, good defense by Jones, just bodying up to the big man, find the body in transition. Harper again, hits again! He's got three threes now after the slow start. Everyone's getting shots that they, they want right now. Anthony Morales into the game, finds the open man, Chemezi, for the easy finish. And now John Dunn has seen enough, and he wants to talk about it. In a game this season, 29 against Hartford, and here's number 29. And it's good for Damon Tate. Well done. <laughs> attempts matching their season high that they set at Hartford. Sam Kello Sele is going to come back into the game for Marist at the next whistle, and oh. Javante McCoy gets the shooter's roll. <laughs> McCoy gets chased, finds Harper in the corner for a triple. Well, they're so focused on the big man, so they Eno. Eno can't completely finish the tip in, but now he finishes it. Wow, I mean, Terriers need points in this possession. McCoy, the tough drive against the double team. Matone cleans it up for the and one. By three. We'll see who gets the look here. Ituka juggled that ball. He'll take the three. Over Pasco and hit it with 4.4 to go to tie the game. Matone in good position on Jones for two more. Well, that's that's a put that interior pass whenever they want, and it's Suk Matone time now. And it's a Tuka time still for Marist at the other end. Uh. Sullivan saving the possession, and Harassme hits the three, and that gives Marist the lead. Well, remember, spinning on Harper. Jonas stays with him. Sullivan drains the three, and it's a four-point Maris lead. Dial up here. 
McCoy for three. He's got it with 34.3 to go from Boston. The final score again, Marist 84, BU 79. Terriers suffer their first home loss of the season, dropping them to 9-4 as they fall to the Marist Red Foxes, 84-79. Now with assistant coach Walt Corbin. Uh, we have to start with Jawatuka. This is the, the highest scoring by an individual against a Terrier team this season. Yeah, obviously we didn't do a very good job with him. We talked a lot early on, uh, you know, all week about his penetration, how talented he is, jump stopping in the paint, shot, shot fags, get to the rim, and, you know, we didn't really pay attention to, to what we had talked about all week. Joe Jones took a timeout about two and a half minutes into the game. I know after a week of finals, you were, you know, oh, this team was kind of coming in with a lot going on in their minds as well. What did you see the first few minutes of the game? Well, you know, we just weren't ready to play, you know, and that's that's why he took the quick one. He said, guys, we're, we're not ready to play. We didn't have the energy that we needed. We didn't come out with the passion, the intensity that we needed, especially on our home court. You're not going to beat a very good team like Marist if you don't come with that, 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 that intensity. When you go 9-4 and four and play as many close games as the Terriers have, you know there are games that you can almost flip a coin in, and it comes down to, to final possessions. What did you see from that last play that got Atuka the game-tying three in regulation? Well, we, we <laughs> I'm laughing because Joe and I talked about that in, in the locker room before we got changed, and then we talked about it again in the huddle, and we just didn't do a very good job of covering it. So, you know, we, we, we gave ourselves every opportunity there defensively. Like I said, we talked about it, but sometimes, you know, no matter how much you try to do the right thing, things just don't work your way, and that's what happened in that last play. Fortunately, the Terriers have two weeks to prepare for the Patriot League season, the second season coming their way. Uh, how exciting is it to play a full Patriot League schedule, see other teams that you saw than just a year ago in that North Division? Well, we're looking forward to it. I mean, you know, two years ago we were in a, such a sweet place and didn't get a chance to dance, and, you know, this starts the, you know, the journey here. So hopefully, uh, you know, we can get a good home crowd and come out and play, uh, you know, Terrier basketball. Coach, happy holidays to you and yours, and we'll see you in a couple weeks. Thank you so much. That's assistant coach Walt Corbin. The Terriers finish their non-conference play 9-4 and four as BU drops a tough one, 84-79 to 79 in overtime to the Marist Red Foxes. To you, Terrier Nation, we wish you all a happy holiday season.